all, welcome to Sync Up, a show about OneDrive, the intelligent files app for Microsoft 365. We are your hosts, Ankita Kirti and Jason Moore. I am Ankita Kirti, product manager on the OneDrive team. And on behalf of my co-host, Jason Moore, who is currently traveling to my native land and enjoying my favorite food, I would like to welcome you to a bonus episode of Sync Up. Today, we are sharing the recent episode of our sister podcast, The Intrazone, produced by the Microsoft SharePoint team. You may remember hearing me mention it as my recommended podcast in our last Sync Up episode. They have talked about OneDrive before in the Ready Player OneDrive episode, and I'm so happy that they are exploring it again. This episode of Intrazone reveals our new OneDrive consumer release, Personal Vault. My favorite hosts, Mark Cashman and Chris McNulty, talk with two of my colleagues, Ryan Hoag and Paul Diamond of the OneDrive team. We hope you enjoy the special edition of Sync Up and our partner show, The Intrazone. Stay tuned for our next Sync Up episode in the second week of October, where we cover collaboration and shared experiences. Welcome to The Intrazone, a show about the Microsoft 365 Intelligent Intranet. I'm Mark Cashman. I focus on SharePoint and OneDrive. Plus, plus, what about you? I'm Chris McTulty. I focus on content services and business applications in Microsoft 365. Yep. So I guess that makes sense. Well, we cover a lot of topics. We're now on episode number, what, 37, 38? And if you look at the history of all episodes, we often talk about SharePoint, OneDrive, your focus area around the enterprise content management. We cover a lot of topics. So we often cover a lot of what's in Microsoft 365. So we thought we'd just play around with adjusting the expectations when you hear us open up the show. You know, it's a, it's a really exciting opportunity as well, because when we think about Microsoft 365, left to right, that includes so many technologies that people are using to drive productivity in their organizations, and I think it gives us an excuse, I mean, a reason why we get to include more people and more voices on the show. I'm really excited, in addition to our own. Absolutely. Well, we want to always add clarity on what is Microsoft 365. And of course, we'll always be very clear on what we're talking about in the context of Microsoft 365. So today, Chris, what's on the episode? Well, today we'll be sitting down to talk about OneDrive, especially OneDrive's new consumer personal vault technologies, which is a new set of features helping you keep your information secure and safe and easily accessible wherever you need to take your cloud with you. We'll be talking with Ryan Hogue, who's the principal group program manager for OneDrive, and also Paul Diamond, project manager on the OneDrive consumer team. And we're also going to talk to Chris Ledley, who is using OneDrive from a consumer perspective. It's the first time we really talked about consumer offerings. And so you really get some good insight in how Chris, from a consumer perspective, is leveraging OneDrive and, of course, Personal Vault. When you talk to the OneDrive consumer team, you know, we're, we're kind of used to the scale of things like SharePoint. But when you realize just how many, how many millions and millions of people are using that tool, um, it's vast. I know myself, I have about half a terabyte in my OneDrive consumer. You know, all my photos, all my music, all, every presentation I've done at every conference ever, plus my own vault. And I discovered there's other people just like me. What? Right? Well, <laughs> I, no one... No one's exactly like me, fortunately. I have taken a picture of you today, and I will swear, at least in the Pacific Northwest, there are very few people exactly like you, Chris, in your Patriots number 12, trying to be the 12th man. Yes, you're I still a Patriots I love it. You know, fan. you're expanding. We're expanding to Microsoft 365, and you're expanding to a point where you can reliably and credibly start a sports-related topic. <laughs> so to set a little context of the episode, it's sort of the where are we at. With Personal Vault, we announced it in preview uh, June 25th. We opened it up a little bit more broadly in the beginning of September. And the goal, and now by the time you're hearing this podcast, is to release that feature to everyone in October of 2019. We highlighted it at the Samsung Plus OneDrive Plus Plus a few other things. They have it as their unboxed event. And we got a ton of feedback both off of that event, our announcement, and so we're hearing a lot of great things, and you'll hear from the team what they've heard and what they're doing with that feedback. You know, Mark, when we're sharing the message about Personal Vault, it reminds me we're sharing more today than just that, are we not? We are, we are, and of course we always will be sharing, but what, what particularly are you mean? What are we sharing? Well, 
as part of our sharing, we here at the IntraZone would love to share with you, our listener, news about our new sister podcast, Sync Up, produced directly by the Microsoft OneDrive team. If you enjoy our discussions today, be sure to check it out. Mark, where can people learn more about SyncUp? As easy it is with an aka.ms, just slash SyncUp, S-Y-N-C-U-P. And you'll see all the episodes. You'll learn more about the show, the hosts, and everything that that show has to offer. I can tell you from the inside scoop, they have a lot planned throughout the year. You know, we, knowing our audience, they love you. They tolerate me. <laughs> but it's about time to be able to introduce Ankita and Jason to a much wider audience. So you're in for a real treat. Yeah, you get a nice balance of engineering and marketing. And again, the topics that they have planned, the people that they're going to be speaking to, it's a very worthwhile podcast to subscribe to. But for today's podcast, here on the Intro Zone, OneDrive Personal Vault, up next. Up next, today on the Intro Zone, we're opening up the Personal Vault. We have new technologies talking about how individuals can secure their most sensitive files through the power and ease of use throughout OneDrive. So, Paul and Ryan, welcome to the studio. Hi. Thanks for having us. Ryan, you are Principal Group Program Manager, and your full name, Ryan Hoag. Yes. What does that mean, Principal Group Program Manager? Principal, I think you can just ignore. I think that tells you how long I've been at the company. <laughs> as as um, long as it's not vice principal. Exactly. <laughs> Don't want to be a vice principal. Group program manager means I'm, uh, I'm responsible for a section of the product, in this case OneDrive, that spans, I guess, multiple aspects. I've been at Microsoft 14 years now. Up until this past week, I've been mostly driving the OneDrive mobile roadmap strategy plans, working with the engineering team. And a new part of my job is picking up all of the collaboration and sharing experiences as well. Very nice. So you're expanding. After 14 years, you're like, I need more. It, it was given to me, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Paul Diamond, you are on our side of things in marketing as a product marketing manager. Do you often just refer to yourself as I am the OneDrive for Consumer PMM, or how do you, how do you state it? Yeah, typically. And um, what that means is I am helping to control and disperse the messaging for OneDrive across all the teams in Microsoft that want to talk about OneDrive, and it's integrated into many products, so a lot of teams do want to talk about it. I also help with research, and that research tends to be an input for the product teams to help them figure out what to prioritize next in terms of building. Paul, we want to know first from you, what is OneDrive when you think about it from a consumer perspective? And generally in this room, and we've had conversations on the show before about OneDrive, what is it from a consumer lens? Sure. So OneDrive is cloud storage where you can store your files and photos. You can access them online, on your mobile device, or through uh, your PC, Windows 7, 8, 10. And OneDrive is also integrated into many other products at Microsoft so that when you share a document from Word, or when you collaborate on a, a file in Excel, you're using OneDrive. OneDrive's also integrated in File Explorer. A lot of people, when they get a new Windows 10 device, they ask, why do I have two sets of the same files in my File Explorer? Well, that's because one set is your OneDrive. One of the things that has slipped into our marketing speak is the notion that OneDrive isn't just a place, it's the experience of all of your content. Can you kind of tease that out for our audience a little bit? Because it, it's a place, I know it's, I can find a location to upload something or to synchronize something, but how we extend OneDrive to provide that interface around the suite. Yeah, it's way, it's way more than a place. I think the mental model for end users is to think about it as a place if they've got their C drive, their D drive, and they've got their cloud drive and, and just a, a location to store things. But as we've had this product out in the market now for, we just passed 12 years from having the first version, and I've actually worked on on most of it from the beginning, we've evolved it a lot. And I think some of the more interesting things that we've done over the years, in addition to having a place to provide an extra layer uh, or a place that's more secure in case you lose your device or a device gets uh, broken or your hard drive fails, and the benefit of having anywhere access so you can be moving across PCs or across phones and getting access. We've also enabled things like making it easier to share and collaborate with other people. We built specialized views around content types like our photos view. So we have this really neat photos view on the OneDrive website and in the mobile apps that spans 
all folder locations in your OneDrive provides a really rich, immersive view across all those in a flattened view, as, as well as things like some of our interesting albums, views, and tags that we apply to, to certain photos. And, and, pla- and places and suggestions. Yeah, there's and, a lot of really cool stuff and we do. looking at my OneDrive consumer, it's like, did you know that two years ago, this was a picture you took in London? Oh, yeah. You're talking about one of my yeah, favorite features. Yes. Yeah, we have this feature called On This Day that is available on uh, OneDrive.com. It's available on our iOS app, and it is coming soon to the Android app. This is a really loved feature that we know a lot of people bet on OneDrive to store all of their memories, keep them safe. And people are really delighted when we remind them of uh, of some of these great memories from years past. I'm looking forward to the memories from years future. I can't wait for us to release that. <laughs> You're working on that feature with the yes. AI and Azure AI, right? Uh, nothing to, to uh, disclose at this time. <laughs> I have one little off script place that I'd like to go, but I think it'll be a decent segue into talking about Personal Vault. You both, uh, while we have you here, were involved with a pretty big partnership uh, with Samsung. They just released a couple of new phones, Note 10, the Note 10 Plus, uh, and I know you were both involved. You were actually at the event. It was the unboxed, un- unpacked. unpacked event. Yes. So I, I just want to hear a little bit about the event, but um, what are some of the things that through Samsung, which is primarily a consumer event, first starting with Paul, what were the main things that we highlighted there and some of the unique things that we are adding to their experience? We integrated three products into the Note 10, Outlook. OneDrive, and the Your Phone app, which is the product that I worked on previously. The Your Phone app, I love it. It's, it basically syncs your phone to your PC. You can throw up an image of your phone on your PC and do everything on your PC that you could do on your phone. Nice. And I know specific to the OneDrive, at least from what we demoed and what we talked about, was the backup of photos. The actual Samsung gallery will now rely on OneDrive. And this is the segue we also talked about Personal Vault coming to the Samsung phones. Yep. We talked about the new deeper gallery integration that's going to be coming out later this fall to uh, to the Note 10 as the first device, where instead of having the OneDrive app do all of the backups and kind of being just sideloaded there on the device, we're actually integrating OneDrive natively into the uh, gallery app, which is the default photos app on, on those Samsung devices. Note 10 is going to be the first one to show that. But yeah, up on stage, one of our VPs, uh, Shilpa, demoed scanning content into her personal vault. Woo! Yeah, it was great. Yeah, we're really excited about that feature. It has been in in kind of test market release for a couple months, and we're just starting the broader rollout now. So let's explore that in a little more detail. We've broken the ice on this. Can we walk through what is personal vault and kind of how we approach the design of it and the rollout? Personal Vault is actually a pretty simple concept when you when you really boil it down to its essence. We had heard from multiple customers through multiple different channels that sometimes they have content that's extra sensitive, that they want to have that extra layer of protection in case somebody gets access to their device, maybe their account credentials get compromised for whatever reason, and they really wanted to have another form of verification before somebody can actually view, edit, make changes to any other content. And so what Personal Vault is, is it's requiring customers to enable two-factor authentication on their Microsoft account, and then we apply enforcement of that at what we call the scenario level, which is accessing a subsection of your OneDrive. So every single time you want to go in there and do something with it, you have to verify it's you. And that's really the the crux of what this feature is. And that's the same when you want to access the personal vault if you're on your mobile. Tap the vault, it requires the authentication. Same true for when you're coming through the web and even sync, Yep, right? yep. And I think, you know, we take advantage of things where they're available to make it a little bit more seamless. So on your mobile device, if you've got biometric input set up, if you've got Face ID on your Apple device or, or a fingerprint on um, any other device, we'll use that as the proof we need to, uh, to allow you to get in. So if we start, that is the what is Personal Vault and certainly the, the design behind it. Paul, what are some of the scenarios either that we're highlighting or we're starting to see people use the vault for? Sure. Uh, Some scenarios are scanning your IDs directly into personal vault, so your passport, your driver's license, insurance cards, etc., so that you always have them handy. Others are uh, certain documents such as maybe taxes or budgets, finances, etc., that you may want to keep extra secure. A lot of photos going in uh, to Vault as well, photos and videos. Really? I should say also that to authenticate Vault is is pretty simple. It's a fingerprint, a face 
read from your camera or Windows Hello, Microsoft Authenticator app, or a PIN. Personal Vault also includes three security features in addition to two-factor authentication, which includes auto-locking after a set interval of time, BitLocker encryption for when you're downloading files from your Personal Vault, they will be stored in a separate BitLocker encrypted area of your uh, Windows 10 drive. We also ask browsers not to cache any of the information that you're accessing when in a browser on Personal Vault. And from a design perspective, there's also a visual nature to it. The vault itself looks like a vault. It's not a, just a yellow folder. And there's the nature of when it's open and when it's closed. You right. get a lot of cues around you know, what state it's in. Um, one of my favorite things is the closing of the vault. It's, it's a nice animation. Yep. If there are these hardened features or things that you get to then take advantage of when you start to use the product, how did the design, the actual design team, think about making sure that this felt like a secure place to put content in its actions, in its uh, iconography and all that? Yeah, that's a great question, Mark. We actually, our designers probably went through at least six or seven variations of how we wanted to represent Personal Vault in the broader context of a, of a customer's OneDrive. Some early versions were just another yellow folder, or I guess we call them golden folders golden now. Folders. Golden folders with maybe a lock iconography on it. But we felt like that didn't do it justice. It kind of got lost in the mix of all of your other other folders where really this is super unique place inside of your OneDrive. And we wanted to also be super clear the state that it's in, locked, unlocked. I think that conveys a lot of important information to customers. And so the kind of safe metaphor is something that we kept coming back to, and we did multiple rounds of user testing and, and getting feedback on the visual visual style. And we ultimately landed on that kind of safe metaphor, and then we went through, I think, three iterations of the actual look in closed and open states, and that's what's in the product today. We're incredibly disciplined about listening to our customers, especially in preview modes. Mm -hmm. What are some of the pieces of feedback that we've been getting throughout yeah, I mean, th with this feature, it was a big effort to build. It took us almost two years of planning and development to get this thing built and out to market. And we had a lot of questions. We wanted to understand not only is it reliable and is it working as designed, but how are people using it and, and hearing from, from folks on what their, what their experience is. We wanted to know, did it have a positive impact on other parts of the product? That's why we, we rolled it out in this limited test market release to Australia, Canada, New Zealand back in July. Some of the feedback that we've heard from people are some of the use cases Paul just talked about. It's coming in super handy. They're more comfortable putting certain content that they maybe weren't comfortable putting in OneDrive before. We've been able to verify reliability of some of the different parts of the system that we've built, whether it's some of the new auth components we have or some of the other aspects that are rolled out. And we also noticed some usability things, too, that where we would look at maybe the, con the customer journey uh, as far as success rates of getting things configured and set up and actually enabling two-factor auth. And so we were able to tweak some of the wording and button placement to make that flow easier and more understandable before we take it broader out to uh, to the rest of the world. Anything that you were seeing with the feedback coming through, whether it was a tweet or something more direct to the team that either validated the scenarios that you were walking through or at least highlighted the how we should convey it or things that we might consider you know, in the future? What are you hearing, Paul? One question that we heard often is the rest of OneDrive not that secure that I need Personal Vault. And the answer is no, definitely not. Um, so Personal Vault is one more step in our journey or mission uh, for robust security. We've been on this journey for a while. We've added things like uh, ransomware detection and recovery. We have suspicious login monitoring. We have file encryption at rest and in transit. We have mass file deletion notification. We have virus scanning on download for known threats and uh, version history for all file types. So, and, and we have password on share. Yeah. That's, I mean, there's lots of things like That's that. That's right. That Password protected sharing links, expiring sharing links. So this is just one more step in our evolution towards the most secure cloud storage. So it is not the only security feature, obviously. You just you know listed a ton of great stuff that helps people no matter how they're getting content in or out of Vault or sharing it. So let's talk about our own personal vaults. Uh, I've got my own story that I'll share, but I'll save it. Just going around the horn here, starting with Paul, how have you been using Personal Vault 
pre-preview, during preview, now going forward? Yeah, so I've got all my tax returns in there. I've got my driver's license, passport, uh, some insurance, some other IDs. And now if I lose them, if I don't have them, when I need them, they're on my phone. Awesome. Chris? I'd say that for me, the biggest benefit isn't just that this stuff is in OneDrive. It's where it's not. Because prior to having this, my information, passports, driver's license, uh, global entry IDs, They might be on a thumb drive, or I might have emailed them to myself and all those tricks people would do to make sure they could print something out and so forth. I don't have to worry about a three-year-old thumb drive that I left sitting in a conference room somewhere that has my taxes from two years ago anymore. It's in one place, which means it's not in five places. Mr. Ryan, you probably maybe used the feature for the very first time in this whole world. What was the first thing you did, and then what are you doing now? Yeah, so I've been using the feature for a while. One of my first use cases was I had to register my youngest daughter for kindergarten this year. That happened earlier in the, I think it was February time frame. I had her birth certificate at home. I scanned it using the mobile app, saved it into my vault. I went to the school literally was able to open my vault, show my phone to the registrar, and use that as a valid proof of her age and enrollment for school without me having to lug around that birth certificate, risk losing it, and then also knowing that that's pretty sensitive content, and I've got that in a safe place. And she's still in school learning today? She's in the second week. We still have tears. Mom and I are trying to work through her getting comfortable with a new school, yeah, um, new yeah. friends. But Do you yeah. keep any of those new, fresh tears in your personal vault? Sometimes, sometimes. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, I used it recently uh, when I went traveling. I went to both uh, Dublin, Ireland, and then on to Finland, and I had scanned my passport. Uh, But for the first part of the trip, I had also been traveling with my kids, so I scanned each of their passports for Sophie and Eli. And most recently, I actually scanned uh, my Social Security card that used to be sitting in a nice tin, you know, this old rickety tin thing in a locked file cabinet pun intended. But now it's much easier to, like you said, reference it if you need to show it to somebody or just look up a number of something that you've scanned, like a passport number. I've done that a number of times now. Very easy to scan. It's also very easy to just drag and drop something in there if you've already got a file that you just want to put in the better location. Yep. Um, that's very easy. To from, do. from my point of view, I think the, the scanning into personal vault is really kind of the killer use case. There's a lot of physical documents and physical artifacts that you want to have a digital record of. And we've always, uh, for the last couple of years now, had the great tech from Office Lens integrated right into the OneDrive apps. Now, by adding this streamlined flow going right into your personal vault, uh, it opens up a whole new world of possibilities to get interested. I just want to be real clear on this feature because I think it's the most interesting design choice that you made. When you scan something that's outside of your personal vault, it is available to the rest of the applications, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so if you're on an iPhone or an Android phone and you scan, let's say, a document and you don't put it in your vault, that file has the potential to be available to other applications. And that's a good thing. Correct. But when you scan it through personal vault... Tell us what happens. Yeah, it's it's really kind of locked down and secured just in that location. We've uh, really restricted the ability for that file to flow outside of the OneDrive app container. So you can preview it. You can use all the built-in previewers that the OneDrive app has to view that content and get access to it. But as far as passing that file to another application or having another application read that file, that's locked down unless the user uh, literally goes through a specific choice and and take that content, move it outside of the OneDrive app, and then it's a multi-step thing to where another app could access it. And we've also restricted the ability to to share personal vault content at, at the moment. Ryan, I have a question I've been dying to ask. When was the very first germination of personal vault? Like, when did that happen? Who came up with the idea? Who decided we should look into this? We probably started talking about this feature about two and a half years ago. It was around the same time that we were looking into going deeper in the kind of security and protection pillar of, of promises, the like ransomware detection. This was an idea that a few people on the team had kind of come up with. They already were using OneDrive and having some of this content stored just in folders. We did some research and we talked to some customers around the world to gauge potential future interest in in different scenarios or things we could go after and provide. And this notion of having a lockbox for certain content, whether it's things we've discussed like passports, 
birth certificates, driver's license, or any other kind of non-traditional photos that we haven't discussed being an appealing solution that people would be likely to use and find value in uh, their Office 365 subscription. Because that was that's another key thing that we want to do here is this is more benefits to the O365 subscribers to have a feature like this in addition to the additional storage they get with OneDrive. Which I think is maybe just a part of a clarification so people are aware at this point in time, you know, how do you qualify for personal vault? How do you get it? Is there a difference in, you know, you might have this, you might have that, and, and some of the things that you can do with the vault? Yeah, anyone with a free OneDrive account can use the full feature of Personal Vault, but they'll be limited to three files that they can store in Personal Vault. And with Office 365 subscription, you can store an unlimited number of files up to your storage limit in Personal Vault. Excellent. As we're closing the door on our discussion of Personal Vault today, we're looking forward to taking this out of preview in coming weeks and seeing how this goes around the world. So we're really encouraged and really excited about what this is going to mean for OneDrive and for our customers globally. So Paul, Ryan, thank you very much for coming in today. Thanks for having us. Thanks. So let's switch this conversation from talking to people who work at Microsoft to moving to a voice that comes from outside of Microsoft. We're going to be talking to Chris Ledley, who works for a company in the UK called Forbes Burton. He's a marketing manager, but we actually want to start to pick his brain about what he does outside of work. So Chris, not Chris McNulty, Chris Ledley, welcome to the IntraZone. Thank you very much, Mark. It's nice to be here. Can you give us a little flavor of where you're calling in from? Yeah, I'm actually calling from, it's the east side of the UK. You guys are probably not more familiar with maybe Manchester, London, but I'm a little bit further north than that. Um, I suppose the, the closest landmark that may come to mind is the Humber Bridge, a big, huge bridge that we have over here. Let's get into it. We want to know, you know, all about your use about OneDrive, starting with when did you actually start using it? Did you actually start using it when it was called OneDrive? If you were using other cloud storage before, we want to know everything that is the past of Chris Ledley and his cloud storage. <laughs> um, well, I've been using OneDrive for, for many years, way back when so it was actually called SkyDrive. Now, there was a, a what? name change. Yeah, that's a long time ago. <laughs> but it was, at, <laughs> uh, I can't remember when the name change occurred. It must have been seven, eight, nine years ago, something like that. You've been on the service for a while, and obviously it's grown up since then. You know, if you think across your day uh, or think of your days you know, years ago compared to now, what are some of the things that you're most commonly doing with OneDrive? At the moment, it actually sort of takes care of everything that I need to be, to be backed up. It has all my files and everything stored in there, but it's, it's just very useful to be able to access any of those files if I am on the move through my phone or through my laptop. So generally on a day-to-day -day basis, it's, it's if I'm working on something at home, so some sort of personal project or some personal files or anything like that, then this uh, gives me the peace of mind that it's being backed up and, and stored as well. So. And just before we get too far into it, give us a sense, is that is that just for personal use or are you balancing between work and life across what we think of as OneDrive consumer and OneDrive for business? I have OneDrive consumer set up myself, and at work we have OneDrive for business, which I'm also familiar with as well. So, but the consumer side of it, you know, it's interesting just hearing that. Like for myself, I've been using OneDrive, OneDrive the consumer property for years, and it is a yep. mix of personal as well as business files. Like every PowerPoint presentation I've ever used at a conference publicly anywhere even going back to before Microsoft, is all there in my OneDrive. And is that GDPR compliant? Uh, it is. <laughs> uh, and, and we knew this a little bit of a cheat, Chris Ledley, that you, know, you from a work perspective, tell us a little bit about that, that approach of GDPR and, and OneDrive on the business side. Yeah, everything that's um, sort of stored on any system anywhere has to be GDPR compliant. And it works similar over, in the, over there as well. But in our privacy policy, we actually have to say, well, we have to let our clients or anybody, know, anybody that we deal with know where their data is stored. And obviously, if it, I'm not hundreds of some of this OneDrive service, you have them all over the world and we'll be based in the US, so we have to sort of declare where that's stored. But that's only if that's 
personal data, if it's a, you mentioned a PowerPoint document or something there, which wouldn't contain anybody's personal personal details, uh, then yeah, I use I do copy them from sort of the, the work OneDrive over to definitely my OneDrive if I need to to work on them for whatever reason at home. But the great thing about the work OneDrive is I can access it as well, so so it works both ways. Yeah, and you know, I I just know from you know the biggest thing that has grown up over the years is it is now a single sync client for both consumer and business, and it's a single application if you're using it from a mobile perspective, um, but with distinction with you know who can access it, how you can share, uh, you know, obviously where the data resides is very similar for, as far as in country, but the rules that you yeah. might apply, you know, on you on your end, you might have you know very different rule set of what you can do with content in OneDrive when you're at work. And of course, very different for, you know, how you work with your files, photos, whatnot in your personal. Yeah, definitely. The biggest thing that we'd like to talk about is to get into your first use of Personal Vault. So let's get into, you know, how did you first hear about it when you first tried to use it um, and some of your uh, thoughts on it? I'd heard some rumbling sort of on some of the tech blogs that I read a while back, but I hadn't actually given much thought to it since then. It, it just popped up. I was actually in my OneDrive one time, and it popped up the notification area that Personal Vault was ready to go, which I thought was well, that's useful. I sort of explored around the pop-up that came up and the various options it gave me. I thought, well, actually, that, that could be very useful for storing the type of documents it suggested in. And I actually, that's when I actually tweeted the OneDrive team to sort of congratulate them on, on it and how well it worked. So I use it to store different things like um, sort of my personal accounts and pay slips, that sort of thing in there, tax receipts, various other personal documents that I may need access to, but I want to add added layer of security to. Can you walk us through a couple of scenarios? The one is I have something new that I want to put into my personal vault. And just to be real clear, we, we have already covered sort of the technical how, but just your end user experience, your real, you know, I have something that I want to scan and put in there. Yeah, it depends which where, how I'm accessing it. If I'm on my phone and I use it, it's um, you open up the OneDrive app, then you just go to click on the personal vault icon and ask for my fingerprint, put the finger, give the fingerprint access and it just uh, opens up. And then you have the scanning options to just literally scan a document in to put in there, which is really easy to use. If I'm on my PC, for example, and I want to drag a file into there, it's a, a similar thing. I just double click on the icon and then it asks, it sends a notification through to my phone to ask me if I approve the access. And if I do, I just click on the approved and it allows me to access the vault to put whatever document I want into. Again, works flawlessly now. When I first set it up, it did throw up a couple of little errors, but I think that was just because on the initial setup, it was a sort of authorizing the different PCs and stuff, but I've had absolutely no problems with it since. When we talked to the team that was building the feature, they certainly, and if you, I think you came across the scanning suggestions. If you look at, you know, of course you can pretty much store whatever you want there. But at the end of the day, it's the user choice that puts what type of content that they want to have a little bit harder to get to for other people. At the same time, they want to balance the making it easy for you to get to. It doesn't have to be too many hurdles, but the right ones. Um, and, yeah. you know, when you go through the list of all the document types, uh, you know, some of the scenarios start to light up. And, and I'll tell you from my own personal, personal vault experience is uh, I have now my driver's license in there my passport and my kids' passports. But I do find it oftentimes mostly to reference a number or to reference an ID or to, you know, when it comes to using it, and just as kind of a last question to you, Chris, when do you find yourself using it? You've maybe gone beyond the preview and and playing with it. Have you actually had a time when you, you went and referenced a document or and what did that look like? The... Most of the use I find for it now is uh, as I keep a sort of a personal budget planner in there that I access quite frequently. So, but I can see lots of potential uses. One just sprung to my mind now. He said about the the licenses. Um, there's also sort of insurance documents for your car over here. If we if you have a bump or a scrape, it's supposed to obviously let people know what your insurance policies are and who they can contact and stuff to things like that. But instead of having to store that 
in a car, glove box or something where it's potentially unsafe. You can actually just store the electronic one in your vault and you can just access it instantly when, wherever, wherever you are. So. So you have now a more balanced budget thanks to Personal Vault. I'm just I'm just <laughs> plugging some marketing here. Yeah, uh, you yeah. have you have an amazingly accessible uh, list of information. Yes, but let's turn just before we close out here to really give you the microphone. You know, as somebody who's gone through preview, moving into real use, uh, and balancing the when. Uh, you have the ear of Microsoft, and I don't mean Chris McNulty and Mark Cashman. I mean the OneDrive team. Um, what's your feedback to them, either about this particular feature or just anything about OneDrive or something that still is listed as SkyDrive? The floor is yours. What's your What's your feedback to Microsoft? Well, it's generally, actually, OneDrive as a whole just seems to have come on leaps and bounds over the last year or so. I think up till uh, sort of fairly recently within that last year, a major competitor of yours did have the slight edge features and accessibility, perhaps usability as well. But I think it's it's definitely level pegging on that now. And I think if if you keep introducing stuff like this, it's just going to get better and better. And that's how I use OneDrive pretty much every day for for most things. One thing I'm not sure about, I haven't actually tried it out, but there is perhaps documents in the vault which may need to be shared securely, perhaps with a, a spouse or a partner of someone just in case there's an accident happened, but they need to be able to access those documents as well. So I don't know whether there's a, a secure way of being able to set that up or something like that. I don't know how that would work technically. So, But I think that would be very useful. I know, obviously, if you start sharing stuff out, that it lowers the, the security of anything. That's definitely, you know, great feedback for us to be able to bring back to our engineers. You mentioned one yeah. thing I wanted to follow up on, which was how you discovered this in the first place. And I'm always curious to find out, when we're talking to our customers, how do you stay current with what Microsoft is announcing? Is it through some of our web properties? Is it through user groups? Um, how do you stay informed? Well, I use, uh, read various blogs. I can name them if you, if you want me to. Um, yes, that would be, uh, I think that would be helpful. All right. There's The Verge, TechCrunch, Engadget. They also, there's obviously YouTube videos. There's a one of there's a various channels that I follow on there that sort of show new features and stuff. But actually, they, I'm just coming back to the vault. I remember seeing something about it on on one of the blogs some time ago. But again, it was just it was almost like a pleasant surprise when it pops up in the lower lower right hand corner to say this is now ready. Do you want to use it? And then it, it go through and explain everything in actually very user friendly terms as well. It's um, some could argue that in the past some of the stuff that Microsoft has not been quite so user friendly, but this is just incredibly easy to use and set up. I will tell you, there's a entire team of about two or three folks that obviously then spread out <laughs> to have a lot a lot reviewed. They call it the first yep. run experience, and of course we're three letter acronym crazy here. So I see a lot the FRE team, and they yep. would they would love and they will hear it because we will point them to your statement. Um, that you had a good first run experience, and obviously there's a balance of not always having a great first run experience. But your second run, I swear, is going to be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> obviously, thank you for letting me share my experience a bit more than anything, and just getting in touch and getting the feedback for it. Because obviously, getting feedback from people who are using it every day can help you make it better in the future. So, Chris, thank you very much for joining us on the Intro Zone. Up next on the IntraZone, FAQ, our frequently asked questions, things that we've been hearing from our customers and our guests around the world. So, Mark, what's a question you've been getting most recently? Most recently, I've been given a couple of talks. I've done it now twice where I talk about governance, and it's governance across the entire spectrum of teamwork. And so by the end of the session, hopefully people are aware that, you know, Teams with SharePoint, Planner, all the things that come with Office 365 group apps – but a big part of that component is what we're talking about, OneDrive. And so the big question is, can I manage and govern OneDrive? And the answer, of course, is yes. It's a big part of not only where you store content, but how you share, how you take content with you. So some of the things around governing OneDrive is who gets a OneDrive. 
everybody in the organization. Not everybody needs a OneDrive or not everybody is somebody that they want to enable with a OneDrive. So you can manage who. You can also span hybrid. So if you wanted to govern people in the cloud, get a hybrid, but people are still on-premises for a period of time. But then it gets to how do they share? And I bet, Ryan, that's a big part of what you're focused on these days is, is the enabling of sharing. But you can really minimize from an IT perspective the ways that people can share internally, externally, you know, with certain rights implied or not. And the last thing is always from an IT perspective to be able to monitor and manage how have people used OneDrive? How did they share? How much content are they using? Are they using too much storage? Whatever that report might be, you can certainly do that. So absolutely, OneDrive is a big part of a governance plan, and we think an important one. Paul, what's your FAQ? I already have two-factor authentication on my Microsoft account. Does Personal Vault add anything more, or should I just stick with 2FA on my account? And the answer to that is you can have 2FA on your account and Personal Vault. And what Personal Vault adds to it is, as we've discussed before, auto lock for your Personal Vault, BitLocker encrypted area on your Windows 10 drive for any files downloaded from Vault, and browsers will not cache your personal Vault file or information. So if you have 2FA already enabled and then you have Vault and it you know, kind of steps you through the requirements, mm-hmm. do we call that 4FA? <laughs> I think we got a new term here. <laughs> FFA, it's like a new fighting club. It's kind of like having an umbrella insurance policy on top of your home and auto uh, right. standard policies. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, we'll get the insurance companies all over that. Uh, so Ryan, round us out. Yeah, for me, with my primary gig leading our um, our mobile apps, I get a lot of questions about why should my organization deploy and use the, the OneDrive mobile apps? There's actually three core use cases that we find and we hear from customers that they're getting value, especially in the enterprise space. The first is viewing and accessing and sharing all of your files for your organization, whether they're your own personal files or those across your organization. So those could be in shared libraries or your own personal OneDrive. And we support over 300 different file type viewers. So you don't have to have another application in order to access and view that content. The second use case is around scanning and being able to digitize physical things and having them go into either a shared library or your own, your own personal storage location. And the third one that a lot of people don't know about, but we hear from a lot of C-suite executives in particular, is on iPads, we have a very robust PDF annotation, markup, and inking experience that is really, really killer. And we've actually just revamped uh, the UI around that, having a new, new way to get at the different pens, highlighters, text thickness. And it's a really delightful way to take notes on the go. Maybe you there's can... a future C-suiter out there that's going to buy a new Note 10 and do some new ink annotations with the S Pen. Oh, Possible? That, yeah. Possible? Yeah, that's another one, too. We do support S Pen for the same type of markup on, on Android as we do on iOS. Wonderful. Chris, take us home. FAQ of this week for you. You know, one question I've heard at a lot of conferences recently comes from consumers and small businesses who have made a bet on OneDrive and on OneDrive Consumer. And they know that we have some fairly sophisticated application integration and metadata management services in SharePoint. And the question is, do I have to move to SharePoint to get the advantage of all of those scenarios? And the answer is no. And the explanation for the answer is we have some great capabilities inside of OneDrive using AI to automatically recognize objects inside images, auto-tag your photos with recognized objects and locations in there, and we open up all that metadata so you can add and augment or remove something um, that you don't necessarily like. You can also take all of those great files and photos inside of OneDrive and generate embed codes. So if I need to extend and integrate those into any other web property or blog, you can do that without having to move those files anywhere else. Fantastic. Well, it sounds like you all actually have had these questions asked to you frequently. And of course, your answers are always cherished and welcomed. Thank you for sharing them. We will now move on to events. So if you wear your SharePoint hat, not just today, not just tomorrow, but every day, and you want to be trained anytime you put that hat on, there's always a place to plug into. So we always want to focus on what are the most current events where you can get that SharePoint training. 
That's right, Mark. So SharePoint Saturdays are a great way to plug into it. It's a grassroots community organization. There are dozens and dozens happening around the year. And most importantly, I know how much you love the price, they're free. Two that are coming up on October 5th. One in Boston, or actually technically Burlington, Massachusetts. SharePoint Saturday, New England. I think I know a guy who's keynoting that one. I know a guy. Well, it's actually, I'm cl- I'm close noting it. Ooh, I like that. That's yeah. a new word for me. I just show up at the end and take questions. <laughs> um, and Ottawa, Ontario, also on October 5th. We'll have the link to those in the show notes. And you can go to spsevents.org to find other upcoming SharePoint Saturdays in a city near you. Now, the next two events, of course, are big. We've talked about them a lot on the show, and we're going to save a little bit more energy on talking about them as they get a little bit closer. But for now, we always want to highlight Ignite 2019. That's November 4th through the 8th in Orlando, Florida. And companion to that is Ignite the Tour, which is, of course, going to be 30 cities across the world in 2019 and 2020. And Ignite is sold out, but Ignite the Tour is not, and it's free. And it happens everywhere. So if you really would love to go see a two-day Ignite in Mumbai or Paris or Milan, Ignite Tour is the place for you. And looking ahead to next year, Microsoft Build. We've just announced the dates, May 19th to 21st, here in Seattle, Learn more at www.microsoft.com slash build. Build is really tailored to the needs of the developer audience, corporate, individual, ISVs, the latest trends in technology. Satya is always certain to have some great announcements there. And if you want to get everything that they're going to start pumping out about Microsoft Build, you can subscribe to their email updates for the latest news about the premier Microsoft developer event. That's live now. Go to the site, sign up for the newsletter, get in the know about what's going to be Microsoft Build 2020. So that's all our updates for events here on the IntraZone. If you have an event you'd like to us to share, please reach out to us, and we'll be sure to feature it in a future podcast. Thank you to our guests, Paul Diamond, Ryan Hogue, and Chris Ledley. Check out our show page for links to everything we talked about today and more. Go to aka.ms slash theintrazone. Send us your questions or feedback for the SharePoint engineering and product teams. Email us at theintrazone at microsoft.com or via Twitter at SharePoint, at mcashman, and at cmcnulty2000, Patriots 12th man. Thank you. And make sure to tell all your friends and colleagues about the show, share the SharePoint, and share the Microsoft 365 love. Subscribe down at your local gridiron or wherever you get your podcasts. Thanks again for listening. We're your hosts, Mark Cashman and Chris McNulty. You've been listening to The IntraZone, a show about the Microsoft 365 intelligent intranet. Thank you for listening to Sync Up, a show about OneDrive, the intelligent files app for Microsoft 365. We are your hosts, Ankita Kirti and Jason Moore. We hope you're enjoying this new show for our OneDrive users, administrators, and developers. Subscribe, engage, and stay tuned for our next month's episode. And definitely visit our show page for links, resources, and more at ak.ms syncup.